uh, session. Thank you. Hi, Tino. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for your um, uh, for your uh, introduction to the project. I think it was not uh, easy to uh, actually go through this uh, three years uh, uh, journey that we, uh, we all experienced um, and, what, and which were very exciting. So um, I'm Maria San Giuliano from uh, Smart Venice. We have been one of the uh, project partners and promoters throughout the, uh, the period, uh, and I will moderate the session uh, for today. Uh, as you see, uh, we will have uh, three uh, main um, speeches to come, uh, followed by uh, a Q&A session uh, with uh, whoever would like to pose questions uh, to, our, uh, to our speakers. Um, and we will finish by uh, half past uh, three today. Uh, you can already start uh, typing your, Q your questions in the Q&A uh, box, um, even uh, when, the, when, when our um, presenters are already um, delivering their, their presentations. Uh, so uh, the first um, speaker I would uh, really give the floor to uh, is now Loretta Anania, um, who is a program officer uh, at uh, DG Connect from the European Commission. Uh, Loretta has been um, really one of the um, um, program officers uh, behind the CAPSI um, program, therefore working out uh, digital social innovation collective awareness uh, platforms such as uh, Family Share, and now uh, at the uh, Next Generation Internet uh, Unit. Um, she will give us a uh, policy framework that uh, is needed to contextualize um, uh, all what we are doing. Loretta, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Loretta has some technical issues uh, uh, that she's trying to fix, uh, so uh, I will suggest to go on with the program. I will uh, uh, keep in contact with her to fix it. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Natasha. Uh, so, yeah, uh, then um, we will uh, listen now from um, uh, Professor Francesca Rizzo from the Politecnico uh, in Milano. Um, Francesca is a, a professor uh, in design at the Polytechnic um, with a long experience in uh, social innovation and uh, smart cities topics. Um, and currently coordinating the CISCODE Horizon 2020 project. And uh, the title of her uh, speech is Enhancing Co-Design and Co-Creation in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, one second. We can hear you. Um, I'm okay. trying to, I, leave, I need to leave the, uh, the sharing uh, that I'm, now trying to do, or I ask Natasha to do it herself because apparently, okay, that, that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so I will try to share my screen first. Okay, can you see it? Can you see the presentation? Okay. Yes. So again, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, very happy to be here and thank you uh, to Family Share for uh, inviting uh, Cisco in this session. Uh, Cisco is a, a project funded under a different program. Is act actually is the SWOF program, which is about uh, citizen science, citizen engagement in developing uh, responsible research and innovation. Um, uh, well, maybe you will see kind of a different framework with respect to family shares uh, as uh, Cisco was not uh, uh, heavily focusing on uh, uh, ICT development and the co-design with this respect, but the larger, uh, let's say, uh, maybe uh, uh, framework in which uh, uh, Cisco was moving on was the framework of, as I said, responsible research and innovation and how to operationalize, to make it practical 
into the activities of uh, uh, researchers. Um, uh, Cisco started uh, uh, like uh, Family Shares in 2018, and uh, it is the only project under the SWOF program funded to try to uh, uh, um, verify uh, how much suitable co-design uh, can be in order to make uh, the development of uh, uh, research and innovation closer to society. Uh, when we applied for the, the project, uh, we were coming uh, very much from, as Maria said, a long experience in social innovation, a long experience in uh, co-design, even the ICT, let's say, uh, environment, and, uh, uh, but more, more than uh, uh, other perspective from the design side, from the design, design discipline. So the idea was uh, then here to try to uh, a responsible research and innovation has many strands. It's composed of different, uh, let's say, layers, and it's a framework from the European uh, uh, community. And uh, we were trying to address three of them the idea of public engagement, how to involve people in developing policies and solutions uh, uh, on the area of uh, uh, science and technology and innovation. Citizen science, as it is another way to involve citizens in doing uh, something together, like uh, collecting data for scientists. No? There is this uh, area where a citizen can be involved uh, by scientists, for example, by uh, uh, collecting data for, for, through sensors that are uh, uh, staying uh, 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 outdoor of their houses or in other ways. Let's say citizens are providing data to the scientists. And also the third trend that was much more about uh, uh, supporting people, uh, uh, citizen engagement, which is something different from uh, 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 co-design co something, but citizen engagement was much more about how to support people to become uh, um, more acquainted or aware about some specific uh, um, scientific or science and technology innovation related issues to be part of the public dialogue in order to give a, 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 a direction to the development of uh, the corresponding policies. Uh, and uh, the, the, when I said the approach is very much uh, based on design is because we were looking at these three areas, trying to give a practical uh, uh, um, operativization to these. Uh, uh, three strands, staying or starting from the idea that until now, public engagement, citizen science, and citizen literature has been done very much uh, uh, like in communication science, trying to you know, open up this dialogue, uh, uh, hearing from the citizens, uh, asking the citizen to help you. Uh, but uh, uh, this kind of engagement was for us very much far away from the application of science technology in the everyday life of people. And as a consequence, uh, uh, this approach that was uh, still uh, staying in the area of uh, 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 dialing, dialogue, listening, chatting, but not uh, doing something together was preventing or is still preventing citizens to better understand the potentiality, but also barriers uh, that uh, uh, working with uh, science, technology, and innovation for society in society can bring in. So basically, we uh, were trying then to combine uh, in a Cisco the uh, co-creation meant as a bottom-up phenomenon that is flourishing across Europe. And here I'm referring to our expertise in social innovation. So the making aspect of the co-creation, doing something not for the end users, but uh, uh, together with uh, not only end users, but stakeholders, which means when I say doing something, uh, basically uh, develop with respect to a challenge, which is bounded to a context, a solution that is uh, uh, implemented uh, in prototypes uh, all together, and uh, which is also, in a sense, um, owned by those that are developing. So social innovation has this specificity you know, inside, which is uh, the fact that the vulnerable, or those that you are, let's say, designing for, 
are active part of the solution. Uh, not only there to give you information, to uh, help you to test something, but much more than this, are there to set the agenda of the problems. So science, technology, and innovation in Cisco are meant to answer to the agenda, which is a bottom-up agenda that starts from the challenges in the context and try together with those that are feeling the challenge and living the challenge to overcome the challenge with some uh, 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 co-design and co-produced. This is the other element Cisco is uh, importing in this framework is that co-design is meant as a, a complete process that is moving from ideation to co-production. And also uh, combining this with the emphasis that currently is on uh, responsible research and innovation, which is about uh, very much the ethical aspect of science, technology, innovation that, of course, are very much important, but uh, with a limited attention and focus on uh, uh, how researchers can work with people to address societal issues, uh, how to uh, support institutions. There is a process of institutionalization here that we were trying to uh, 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 targeting about uh, the fact that citizens uh, could become uh, part of the team which is working in science and in technology. And this should even become part of the culture of the scientific institution or the uh, 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 innovation institution or even the public institutions that are carrying on a process of developing an innovation. Uh, the key assumption for the Cisco experimentation was then a bottom-up approach to the development of solutions to societal challenges. Uh, is uh, inherently bound to the notion of a responsible research and innovation. What we were saying is that uh, in the very moment in which I start to address a societal challenge, I'm already within uh, the matter of research, responsible research and innovation. And uh, uh, the other assumption we were there trying to test it was the idea that design methodology and especially the fact that uh, implementing together would expose people to the barriers, the limits, and the constraints that all of the uh, other aspects of the system, the technology, the culture of the people involved and the institution involved bring into the process with the idea of overcoming these barriers. So how much design is able to support the constitution of a co-design team and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, overcoming silos that uh, in many contexts are there to work uh, uh, in uh, uh, preventing the complete uh, uh, collaboration between different stakeholders in developing a specific solution. Uh, in doing this, we were trying then through the project understand uh, cultural and organizational and procedural transformations needed to embed co-creation within organizations because the assumption is that only if co-creation is part of the culture of the organization or organizations that are playing there, it would really work. Experiment with design to build capacity about co-creation. So the idea was there not to act as a uh, only researcher observing something, but also to pass this competence and to build the capacity in the organization we were working with and leaving them there uh, at the end of the project with a transformation in terms of their competencies and also study co-creation ecosystems. So by combining uh, uh, different sources of information, we, were try we are trying right now, because now we are at the, in the last year of the project, we are trying to combine all the results we obtained to describe uh, uh, ecosystem, co-creation ecosystem, effective dynamics that can work there, uh, as well as, of course, uh, 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 what is uh, feasible to be done in order to integrate society into the real development of science and innovation. Um, this was the, let's say, conceptual approach or the methodology of the project. So we were doing field research. We conducted 10 uh, uh, long-term experimentation across Europe. We were involving 10 different labs uh, 
uh, situated uh, in networks that are dealing with uh, uh, citizen and science or innovation. We were involving an all, which is the network of the living lab. We were in, involving fab labs uh, network, which are the labs, uh, uh, the fab labs that are, you know, flourishing in, uh, in different cities, already flourished in different cities across Europe, that are very much close to the culture of making uh, and making something together with uh, uh, the, the, the stakeholders of the context where they are uh, uh, located and uh, the science museum network that are very much uh, linked with the uh, 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 science communication and with the, the uh, activities linked with the idea of disseminating uh, science uh, and uh, knowledge produced by science and innovation uh, to make people more aware of uh, uh, their contents. Um, so uh, uh, we were conducting, sorry, action research with these 10 labs, field research conducting uh, case studies analysis. We conducted an analysis through uh, uh, 100 case studies that were then selected and uh, uh, um, analyzed in depth uh, uh, in a sub number of 40. And we were conducting this research. Triangulating uh, uh, all of these results, uh, we are now trying to give guidance uh, to this idea of uh, developing co-creation uh, uh, ecosystem that are even able to include uh, the notion of responsible research and innovation. Some example of the 10 labs we had, and they were proceeding all together for 18 months. I want to underline this because uh, 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 in order to have effective uh, uh, results and impact from this kind of approach, you need time. What we observed in many projects across Europe, but not only project, I mean, it's also a kind of an approach that is now uh, evident in different contexts across Europe, the idea of co-design workshops. Co-design workshops are, let's say, at least the initial, the beginning, the starting point of this process. Uh, the labs we were having with us worked for 18 months trying to start from a challenge in the context, analyze the challenge all together with the context, redefining the problem by analyzing the challenge, building on the network of the stakeholder. So we were not directly pointing to a specific user or end users, but we were trying to understand in the context, the resources that were there and try to take an advantage of these resources. And we were trying then to go on uh, 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 to implement the solution they were envisioning together and constantly try to individualize, understand the, the feedback, the effect on the organizations that were working with us. Um, because as I said, you in order to institutionalize this kind of project uh, processes, in order to spread co-creation and specifically co-design as an approach to co-creation, for us, it was important. Uh, this is a process that takes time. If you want to introject the culture of uh, uh, um, co-design, let's say user centricity is at the larger scale, but I would better prefer complex processes of co-design together with all the stakeholders. The organizations that are leading the, this process, they can be uh, uh, municipalities, they can be uh, uh, public authorities, they can be a combination of private and public and people authorities or different constellations of this kind, uh, you need time in order to expose uh, the stakeholders to the process and to give them time enough to uh, re, uh, discover the effectiveness, understand uh, uh, the potentiality and even get legitimation, especially to the eyes of the policymakers, which was the last layer we were trying to catch with our project, uh, legitimation about these processes. Polyfactory in Milano Fab Lab was focusing on health and wealth of uh, uh, young stroke survivors. And it was a passion-centered innovation approach. The challenge for this uh, uh, community was how to improve the movement of these children uh, with cerebral palsy, thanks to sound-based innovative solutions. So as you can see, very much technologically driven, uh, this was the, this, this project in Milano. And it was uh, 
uh, uh, conducted with a, a network of stakeholders, patient associations, fight the stroke, caregivers and patients, industry and innovation community, uh, uh, an IoT lab based in, in Milano, and local, especially municipality and regional policy makers. Uh, the solution, technologically speaking, is body sound, a system of motor simulation of the limbs based on the transformation of movement into sound. I will tell you later on in two slides what we learned uh, uh, from the technological project with respect to some of the dimension I was mentioning before. Another uh, out of the three uh, is this one based in traces uh, 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 in the Paris Science Center. Traces is a, 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 a it's a kind of an institution which holds uh, to the, the network the Science Museum. So they were very much concentrated in supporting uh, the Parent Science Center to, to disseminate information and knowledge about science and technology, and technology to citizens. And uh, the, the, the key topics here were they were work, they are working a lot on artificial intelligence, trying to shorten the distance between citizen and artificial intelligence. So it's a very hot topic in responsible research and innovation. And uh, uh, key uh, topics here were algorithmic responsibility and intelligibility, user consent, uh, evolution of professions, automated decision systems. So try to make people closer to these topics. The challenge was how to raise awareness of algorithmic, deci algorithmic decision making uh, within general cultural activities uh, or through general cultural activities, if you, if you uh, prefer. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, also here, they started from a stakeholder map and uh, they were putting all together uh, stakeholders that were interested in the topic uh, independently, let's say, from the aims of the project in a sense. Uh, and the stakeholders were the Science Society Research Association, Computer Science Lab, uh, Nouvelle Generation Internet Foundation uh, um, uh, within uh, the uh, Paris Science and Litre uh, University, hackers and activists from civil society. The solution is uh, basically a kind of uh, activity. What if uh, uh, you were behaving as an artificial intelligent alg specific algorithm. Basically, what they have tried to do is to uh, educate or imagine a kind of a process of education of an artificial agent uh, with respect to the culture of everyday people, let's say, in Paris. So the idea was what, what an artificial agent need to learn in order to uh, uh, become part of us or part of the culture or becoming part, part of us when we are uh, 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 watching, uh, listening, uh, 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 taking part in an experience, in a cultural experience. So uh, very much uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, it was not a concrete prototype, as you can see, but very much an explorative activity. Uh, and by, by imagining uh, what these uh, artificial intelligence should eventually learn, people were trying to, uh, uh, to, to, were trying to work together and build a specific map of the knowledge and the competences for these artificial agents. So doing, making something together. And it was very much explorative, as I said. As a third uh, example, I want to bring you here the experience of the Krakow Technological Park in uh, uh, Krakow. They were working on this issue of air pollution, which is a relevant issue in, in Poland, as you know. And they were really, really working a lot with policymakers because what they did, this is a completely different case, they started since the beginning uh, to support uh, within Cisco the, the region, the Malapuska region where, where Krakow, Krakow is, is placed, is based, uh, to develop the new policy for the air pollution, the new regional policies for air pollution. 
So uh, the challenge was how to improve the quality of the air in Krakow by motivating citizens and supporting decision makers with relevant co-creation tools and instruments. This brought uh, here again to a network of the stakeholders, but the, the role of Malapuska region is, here was very relevant together with the citizens and with Krakow that was working as an intermediary to support the region to develop the policy together with the citizens. So it was a kind of a process of policy making, making together with the citizens. But at the same time, in order to avoid to this, the separation of the citizen from the policy they were designing, uh, the, the, the idea has been there to experiment with the but uh, uh, let's say boundary of the policy. The policy was meant as a kind of framework where citizens and uh, civil uh, society from Krakow could experience concretely the, the, the policy. What I mean is that they, uh, within this, uh, this lab, they not only supported the region to develop the policy, but they were there to develop uh, together with the citizens a specific app that was the result of the, uh, uh, what was allowed or not allowed by the policy. And also uh, uh, that was trying to address practically the recommendations or the expectations of the policy. It was an app of course for uh, behavioral change. The two things were experimented in parallel. So the results from the use of the app was feeding the uh, development of the policy and vice versa. The policy was changing with respect to the fee, the feedback obtained by the user, the citizens were doing of this app. The final result is uh, now a policy which is, uh, 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 of course, uh, now uh, uh, established and uh, uh, the app that is uh, spreading in the region to intervene in this very delicate issue for the uh, for the for this region but more than this in this specific project what was really interesting was this idea of the value of the feedback from policy to solutions and vice versa it was a way to involve people in a much more uh, 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 let's say closer to the idea of what does it mean to design a policy for air pollution so uh, uh, to make them aware even by developing something that could include uh, the constraints and the uh, orientation the policy uh, uh, was, was, giving, was giving them and will give them because the policy will affect the everyday life of these people in that region. So just to understand what we learned from these 10 labs, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the difficulty to move from ideation to implementation. It's always, let's say, easy to imagine a solution and even to start some prototype that you can test in some place here and there. But what we notice is that uh, in the majority of the case, the risk is to leave this kind of experimentation far away from the very core of the institutions and the organization that need to change. Because as soon as you move from ideation, this is especially true for policymakers to implementation together with citizens. Of course, uh, there is again the prevalence, let's say of the expertise, uh, which is not bad, of course, uh, but this is posing uh, uh, the, 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 the difficulties in the process of uh, co-production. If you want to really affect people uh, uh, understanding and vice versa, the development of science, technology and innovation with the agenda, which is coming from the bottom up, uh, we believe that co-production is fundamentally because there is there the place where each other can better understand, but uh, um, uh, the, 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 in, if we, we keep the process of co-design only to the face of ideation, the risk is vice versa, do not impact the system, do not impact the stakeholders, do not impact the culture of the different stakeholders that are taking place in the process. Uh, of course, some an initial recommendation could be try to combine top-down and bottom-up approaches, take inspiration and input from both approaches and combining them to obtain real impact. This means to change uh, uh, minds and culture, not only of course, from the, uh, I mean, from the different uh, level of uh, the governance that here are uh, in place to, uh, 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 to, to shape and to 
to, to, to lead the, uh, the uh, entire ecosystem where we were working. Uh, there is a need of evaluating these activities, not only in terms of citizen engagement or city, uh, the effect on the cities, on the citizens or the end users, but in a larger way, there is the need to show the effectiveness of co-design to decision makers and policy makers. And uh, we still uh, are in need of this kind of framework that can help uh, uh, to measure the impact of this kind of project in the organization that are leading them to understand uh, uh, the kind of uh, transformational processes this kind of project are boosting. And of course, there is an issue about the context, as we notice in the tree lab, but it's the same for the other labs. Uh, contexts are different and context requires so, uh, a strong adaptation in terms of uh, uh, methodology, in terms of tools, even in terms of evaluation and assessment and uh, 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 the recommendation of course here is to adopt a kind of a flexible process processes and tools uh, give the possibility to adapt and, and when the, the context change and uh, uh, to be uh, let's say sensitive with respect to ecosystem and the ecosystem resources and I think I'm done. <laughs> I hope I was uh, uh, respecting the, the time uh, frame you gave me. And uh, also I hope it was uh, maybe not exactly in line with the workshop we are uh, uh, conducting today because it's a bit, uh, uh, maybe it's not the process, the project per se is not focusing on technological development. Uh, but I think this is uh, uh, the, 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 the aim, uh, uh, the Cisco aim is trying to, to, to uh, implement this kind of uh, uh, um, learnings that we are uh, uh, um, extracting from uh, this long experience we had with the 10 labs and try to push this view that co-design is much more complex than uh, in a different situation we can see and uh, it requires cultural uh, change, it requires capacity uh, and competencies and it requires a kind of legitimation process that is uh, uh, coming from uh, recognizing the impact of the processes on uh, uh, the different uh, um, project aims, but even with respect to something very relevant, which is uh, 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 related to the societal issues that we are living today. And uh, if it's the truth that this kind of processes can better uh, support the address of these uh, uh, of possible solutions for the societal challenges. Thanks a lot, Francesca, for your uh, uh, rich presentation. I think uh, really uh, many of the challenges you mentioned were uh, shared by the uh, Family Share project and the way we implemented co-design and co-creation as we will learn from the next um, speeches. Uh, let's try to give the floor again to uh, Loretta Nania from DG Connect. Loretta, uh, can you hear us? Would you try to speak? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, very well. The floor you is yours. I, I cannot see myself either. <laughs> uh, no, we cannot uh, see your face, so but, but, but we at least we can hear right. you very let well. Let me try this. Start video. You, I cannot start the video because the host has disabled it. So if you enable my video, you might we are trying to uh, enable you. Yeah, we are trying to enable you, but apparently it doesn't All right. work. While you're trying, so while you're trying, I'll try to make a few points. So the first is that um, I've been involved in projects with a co-design approach uh, forever. So since the beginning, I agree with all of the things that was said by the two speakers. Um, the importance of co-design is that not just citizen engagement, which was said, but let me give you an example. When I was at MIT, I had the office, uh, uh, the first computer, which at the time was a super brain, didn't exist now. Uh, Apple won the battle, Apple and 
IBM. And my room was wanted for something else. And my professor came, had a meeting with all of the people saying, look, we have this uh, change of resources. We need this, we need that, what shall we do? And one of the solutions was for me to give up the office. Now, a similar situation happened with a new manager and he simply sent an email saying, Loretta, leave your office, okay? Now, that's the difference between the top down and the co-design. In other words, when you have a, a reduction of resources at municipal level or in my unit, so to have a democratic decision-making process where you are shown the choices and you are part of making them yourself, uh, this is a situation that bears well for the future, no matter how hard it is. So we are now in, in, in deep uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, there's not enough resource, public resources, everything, because, you know, the private sector is struggling. So the, the central banks have changed completely from, a, you know, tighten your belt approach, which was used in Greece, to spend as much as you can now so as to avoid the worst. So we've seen a complete revolution in the central bank uh, approach to development. And um, so there will, be, there will be suffering, but in order to be a resilient society, we need to put in place those processes that allow people to be co-designers, co-deciders. Now you've mentioned uh, your app, um, in your previous meetings, you also mentioned uh, participative budgeting, uh, PB, which uh, bilancio partecipativo. Uh, you also mentioned things like merende online. Um, now, all of these things are now coming to a force because uh, there are no more physical meetings in many places. I mean, I've been out of the office since March 13th. Um, so, <laughs> As you can see, my, my computer is not working. <laughs> so luckily I have a, an iPhone, <laughs> which seems to uh, work on Zoom because of the firewalls. We need at least four passwords to enter everything. So I cannot just click a button because of uh, security. Cybersecurity is one of the areas. Um, now, very quickly, what I want to say is that it's been a joy to have civil society and mu municipalities signing contracts. So this is the case. We have Smart Venice. We have, um, I've had three projects with Milan um, and Thessaloniki is one of your cities. So uh, it's at the level of municipalities now. Municipalities have to join together with the Fab Labs and uh, other, other uh, digital hubs, call them digital hubs, because now is the time for us to deliver. We've spent many years funding this. Uh, I think now you need to deliver solutions that work for people. I think the topic of uh, work-life balance is unique in age 2020. I think uh, you're the only project that looks at that. Um, and we've seen an enormous change in, in the work-life balance, sudden, okay, due to the changed uh, circumstances. So I think a sociological approach that you've used, uh, ethno-methodological co-design, I think that's really useful. And what I'd like to say is I'd like to encourage you to have a look at the new, very new documents, which uh, I wouldn't say replace RRI, but is the new, it's the new normal, as we call it. So the, there's a document called the 2020 Strategic Foresight Report. Uh, charting the course towards a more resilient Europe. I can't show you, but so this report, if you actually look look at it, um, it's it's looking it's the forecasting how we can be ready for dramatic change over the next two years. Um, there's a compass and there is a a dashboard, and the dashboard was done by Enrico Giovannini, who was in my Web Cozy project. You remember. Um, Web Cozy uh, was looking at statistical uh, analysis beyond the top-down, bottom-up approach, which Francesca Rizzo mentioned as, you know, two opposite poles. You cannot just integrate uh, Eurostat data with Facebook uh, data. They're completely different. Um, so 
I would encourage you to look into the strategic foresight agenda, um, to look at the dashboard for socioeconomic resilience, check out the categories. Um, I think that will be a very interesting uh, study over the next two years, and especially for social scientists. And um, finally, I wanted to say, um, to say about the new program, so you know the, there's no agreement yet. It's, it, that's why I didn't give you a slide, because whatever I say <laughs> could be changed. It's still only at draft. But if you look at the next generation EU program, whose budget is, uh, the parliament wants a bigger one and the council wants a, a less, less one. So we don't know how many millions, billions are coming. But if you look there, we are really going backwards um, in terms of categories because the, there's four destinations, okay? Or six, there's six destinations. And my unit, which was funding CAPS, Collective Awareness Platforms for Social Innovation and Sustainability. Now, social innovation has almost disappeared as a, as a unique topic. Uh, it's been embedded in almost everything else, which is now called the twin transition. So everything has to be digital and green. And for those who want to continue uh, getting funding, because your project is also ending, um, I would encourage you to look at destination six, which is a human centric ethical development of digital and industrial technologies. And there you have the draft program with areas uh, which all are labeled human. So if you have human zero one uh, is the one about AI, which uh, was mentioned. Um, Human 02 is also about AI and human 03. Human 04 is the next level of intelligence and autonomy. Human 05 is trust and data sovereignty. And, go, and 06, that's what my new unit is going to be involved in. Finally, a last word on trust. So in order to have child care services, um, you need a gender balance, which I think your project had looked at and Italy is, is not the best on that <laughs> dimension. Uh, but you also, and you need a cultural change uh, in terms of the work-life uh, balance, but also uh, you need a trust framework. In other words, the commission has now announced, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, a new activity on giving every citizen a, a, an EU ID, okay? But the problem with an EU ID is that people do not trust having a single number. So to have an individual with a number and everything pinned to it, your taxes, your, your every movement, uh, your every speech, everything recorded, that's a situation we don't want. We do want to preserve human rights. So I think the area of trust, how do you sign into something? I mean, you know that I had trouble because I needed uh, four levels of passwords uh, to get into a Zoom conference, you can imagine. And if we do this QR coding for everybody who has to enter a plane, um, I think we're, go we're gonna be in a very <laughs> a society that is, <laughs> that is more exclusive, that, uh, excluding people than including them. So I would encourage people who are in your area to look at this, uh, the resilience framework the forecast, uh, which is the closest to social science work uh, in the technology area, and also to contribute uh, to the development of trust frameworks that are based on human, human values. Now, of course, the name of my unit is uh, Next Generation Internet. So I look after things that have to do the internet. And uh, you mentioned Faith Fab Labs. So of course, Fab Labs comes from MIT. I met the guy many, many years ago. At the time I said, I don't fund uh, hardware, only software. Well, now we're going back to manufacturing. So in COVID, um, Made For You, which is another project you might have heard of uh, from the Center for Social Innovation in, in Austria, they have completely uh, changed their uh, grant agreement in order to uh, distribute everywhere uh, the 3D mask, masks, uh, respirate, uh, respirateur, breathing equipment for hospitals. 
silicone uh, masks for doctors. This was used in Brazil, by the way. Uh, there was an article in Brazil. So we are now seeing that innovation is, is as you said, going back to making um, and, and that some of the solidarity activities are, are really incredible that have happened over the next few months. I think I will stop there. And sorry for not being with you uh, with my face as well. <laughs> sorry about that. These Thank firewalls. You. Thank you, Loretta. Uh, it was indeed very useful to, um, to hear about um, how the um, policy frameworks are, uh, have been uh, evolving and, uh, and really um, the challenges that we faced in, uh, in, during family shares uh, uh, had a lot to do with, um, uh, with the new emergency situation, as uh, Agostino was, was mentioning, but uh, also in general, um, with the uh, more, let's say, traditional challenges of um, engaging, um, raising the awareness, um, uh, triggering a behavioral change, and also uh, from, the, from, from the side of the ICT development and researchers, um, building the, the uh, needed um, mindset to incorporate and listen to societal uh, views. Uh, but we will uh, hear more on this uh, from our next two speakers um, about how we actually uh, made it in Family Share uh, co-designing and co-creation the platform and the services. Uh, so Chiara Leonardi is a researcher from uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler uh, in Italy, uh, and um, she will give a joint presentation with uh, Manolis Falelakis, uh, uh, who is um, a programmer at uh, VI Labs, another of our partners. Good, okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I will present uh, very quickly the um, bottom-up approach and the co-design methodology uh, that we followed during these uh, three years of a family share project. Uh, sorry. Um, so the goal of Family Share has been, as I had already explained by Agostino Cortesi, has been to design and deploy a digital social innovation platform to address the increasing difficulties of families uh, to balance work and family uh, responsibilities. Uh, the ambition has been, uh, therefore, to address uh, this uh, societal issue, encouraging new forms of uh, collaborative childcare uh, that exploit time sharing models uh, and the opportunities offered by digital solution. Uh, so the challenge has been at the same time digital and uh, social. Um, to reach this, uh, this goal uh, that uh, comprises both, uh, uh, both aspects, so the digital and the social dimension, we implemented a participatory innovation process meant uh, as a process in which uh, innovators, researchers, uh, users, and communities co-create knowledge uh, and solution. In particular, um, we grounded our process uh, on participatory action research. Uh, that is an approach uh, to research in, in and with communities that emphasize uh, participa uh, participation and action. Uh, this approach uh, seeks to um, understand the world by trying to change it, following uh, continuous reflection and encouraging uh, the inclusion also of uh, vulnerable social groups. In Family Share, uh, we try to promote uh, the engagement uh, of stakeholders and potential beneficiaries since the beginning uh, uh, of the process, uh, comprising public administration representatives, parents, uh, uh, communities of parents, uh, HR manager of company, and expert in parenting, uh, and so on. 
at it at um, each city lab that uh, has been involved uh, in the project. Um, our perspective on the design of technology has been driven, uh, first of all, by an understanding of technology and innovation as a result of a continuous negotiation between, uh, from one side, the requirement emerging from cities and, and communities, and on the other hand, uh, the technical opportunities and constraint. We had to cope with the constraint imposed by the um, rapid uh, prototyping approach that uh, has been followed and uh, the reuse of available open source uh, solution. Uh, second, we followed a co-design approach in the design of technology in which uh, the end user actively participate to, the, to all the phases of the design process from the ideation to the final evaluation. And third, our perspective followed um, an evolutionary design approach, an iterative approach, where technology is shaped not only during the design process, but it is also reshaped continuously uh, through the concrete and local uses of the technology. Uh, in this way, requirements are defined also by observing how technology is appropriated and used by people and how technology is uh, refined and reshaped to meet uh, user local uh, needs. Uh, here an overview of the whole co-design process. As it um, uh, already explained, we had two iterations of the design and two piloting phases carried out in six different uh, European cities. And uh, piloting activities in which the digital and social solution has been evaluated and new requirements have been incorporated within the new release of the app and the platform. Um, I will present you more concretely uh, some of the activities carried out in the different city lab. Uh, the initial co-design activity to define the feature of the digital solution involved uh, more than 300 people. Stakeholders ranged from private and public organization to network of parents. Uh, the co-design activities gave us uh, several inputs on participant perspective and on how childcare might be socialized, how parents may support each other to um, care about their children in a collaborative way, and how this process of mutual help can be encouraged and supported by a digital solution. Uh, this different perspective that emerged uh, across the different uh, city lab and the different requirements uh, were then um, have been then discussed and synchronized by the project partner during a number of design sprints that uh, were useful to refine the output and take decision about the feature to be included in the first version of the application. Here, uh, the three main design pillars that drove the development of the app. Uh, first of all, um, family share mobile application. Um, um, the goal was to combine online and offline inter interaction modalities in order to support network of parents and to guarantee high level of trust among community members. This means that uh, collaboration among the group members should imply not only online interaction, but also face-to-face -face interaction. The second design pillar uh, has been to um, the decision to support communities of parents uh, in organizing and coordinating shared childcare activities. So the app uh, and the platform should be, uh, had to be designed uh, um, to help groups uh, in sharing time and other resources and to plan child care initiative in a collaborative way. Third uh, pillar, uh, the application uh, had to be designed in order to protect privacy and personal data. Actually, a crucial issue we addressed uh, in the co-design process has been uh, uh, to find efficient uh, and appropriate solution for dealing with uh, private data 
especially sensitive personal data of children in a way that, uh, uh, and to find a balance between the need of uh, relevant information um, about children uh, and that at the same time uh, protecting uh, uh, their privacy. So um, I now uh, leave the floor to Manolis that uh, will explain uh, uh, how these requirements and pillars uh, have been incorporated uh, into the development uh, of the app. Thank you, Chiara, and hi, everyone. So without going too deep, I would like to, uh, uh, ex ex uh, to, to point out some design choices that we made in terms of technology in order to help with uh, the agile nature of this uh, of the co-design process. So first, the first thing we did was that we opted for a development of a hybrid app instead of a native mobile app. This enables the mobile content to be always in sync and uh, on, in line with the platform. So it's always up to date, while at the same time, it provides uh, the programmer with access to the native API of the mobile device. So you can provide access to sensors like the a location sensor or the microphone or the camera if needed, as well as the calendar. So the second uh, choice uh, that we made was to base the development of the different platform instances on a single code base with, com with configuration files. That means that the code for all individual city lab instances is the same, is shared across them, and only their configuration is changed uh, and adapted to their needs in terms of uh, languages uh, supported, uh, menus, and uh, some features as well. So in effect, we only build and maintain a single application, a single platform. And for example, whenever a bug was identified somewhere, we could fix it immediately across all the instances uh, if we fixed it for one. And uh, finally, uh, platform instances were deployed in Docker containers. That basically means that they are running as if they were multiple individual web applications, uh, as you will see in uh, the following diagram. So as you can see, each individual instance is isolated from all the others and deployed separately. This is important for security and privacy, of course, because users of uh, one app, one uh, city lab don't have access to data of uh, uh, the other city labs, as well as scalability. We can add new city labs quite easily by adding new boxes uh, here. So all of these choices were meant to increase flexibility and accessibility, which are very important, of course, in, for participatory, for code, for code design uh, processes. So for instance, it is quite simple uh, with this architecture to support a new language. We don't need to modify the code. We just provide the translated menus in a separate file and then configure uh, the respective apps so that they work with uh, that file. Also, it is easy to deploy new platform instances for new communities. And though that we initially had planned for six uh, instances, uh, same as the number of our city labs, we have now uh, deployed uh, 20 already at this moment. And this is an overview of the technologies that we used in uh, development. Most of them, the vast majority actually, uh, are open source uh, and state-of-the-art frameworks, program frameworks. Now, moving to the functionality of, uh, of our app, of our platform, uh, this is based on uh, three notions, so on the notion of the group, of the activity, and the time slot. So the users can create or join a pre-existing group uh, of uh, parents, then they can organize and participate in activities which in turn take place uh, during some particular time slot. So now let's have a look um, at some videos. Uh, we're gonna see the, uh, the platform working. Uh, this one shows how uh, groups uh, work. Um, so first we go and create a new group. We provide it with a name and uh, a description. Then we can set the visibility of the group. We can make it visible to everyone or we can only uh, make it visible to people that have an invitation from us to join the group. We provide a location and then we can invite other members to join the group from the users of the, the app, of this instance of the app. 
as you can see, the group is now created. It's uh, the one at the bottom, new group, but it is empty. No activities have been created so far. So now let's go and create an activity. So we'll click on the big uh, orange plus button there, name the activity. We can also provide it with a description and uh, a location. These two are optional. And we can also choose a color so that it appears nicely on our calendar. We choose the dates here and we create some time slots for these dates. So for each, we select the start time and then the end time. We can also set the required number of parents, the minimum number or the required number of children. Also location is necessary for, this, uh, for the activity. And then we just click on create and the activity is there in our group. Then we can go and uh, declare participation, our participation in some pre-existing uh, activity and time slot. So here we can see all the, the time slots of this activity. We select one of them. We can uh, add our availability and our children uh, availability as well, if we wish. So now this time slot appears in orange, that, which indicates that we participate in this one. And if we go back to our calendar, we are going to see this activity that appears in our calendar. And finally, another video that shows how we share children information here uh, when needed. So this is Gianluca who created the uh, the video, his profile, and they are go he's going to add a child. So insert data and name, surname and date of birth, as well as gender, if we want to. And then we can add things like allergies, special needs, and any other notes that we think uh, that are going to be useful for the parents attending the co-playing activity. Uh, so we must point out that uh, sensitive inf information about children are only visible to specific group members. So only the ones that really take care of these children during an activity and not to everyone in the group. So after we built the first uh, version of the, of the platform, we went through, uh, uh, we performed three layers of user testing in the first one. Uh, there was an internal evaluation among the consortium members, which helped us provide a number of uh, improvements. Then we went, uh, uh, we carried out usability testing with a number of, uh, I think it was 46 participants uh, from our city labs that gave us a lot of insights on the main usability problems, uh, which were quickly fixed and before proceeding to, uh, with the actual piloting. So before releasing the app to the public, uh, to the participants of our city labs, of course. And this is the third, this was the third uh, widest round of evaluation, which involved parents that were really using the app to organize childcare activities. Uh, we, in order to evaluate uh, and explore different dimensions of the user experience, we carried out individual interviews, focus groups with uh, uh, small, small numbers of parents. And, and we also gave in questionnaires to all the parents participating in order to um, explore uh, usefulness, usability, etc. So after this evaluation took place, we had to aggregate the results collected across the city labs and define priorities for new features, corrections and adjustments in order to prepare the second version of the platform to be used during the second pilot. So, uh, and for instance, the calendar has been redesigned due to usability issues and was improved to facilitate activity planning. Uh, also, we added roles uh, to include external uh, educators or professionals because pilots showed that in some contexts, some cases, self-organizing among parents worked really well, but in others, professionals were necessary to help with uh, organizing the activities. And we also added uh, some uh, functionalities to help 
parents manage safety during co-playing activities, such as here we can see an emergency button, which were, uh, can be used to quickly call for emergency services in case there is an emergency during the activity. And um, another important feature that we developed in the second version was advanced planning. Oh, sorry. So this functionality was developed to help parents plan activities spanning through long periods of time or involving large groups of parents. So in these situations, matching between the needs and the, of the children and the availabilities of the parents can be quite challenging. So given the needs and availabilities, the platform tries to produce an optimal solution uh, for a specific range of dates and automatically uh, create activities uh, with all the necessary details. So the first step, and you can, as you can see on the, on the left, uh, is where parents indicate their needs for their children, needs for childcare. Then parents indicate their availabilities for covering the turns. And uh, in the third phase, the app provides a solution that matches needs and availabilities. It takes into consideration factors such as um, child to children to parents ratio, minimum number of uh, volunteers needed per activity, uh, and uh, also tries to balance the time spent by the parents that participate in, in these activities. Of course, this is just a proposal. The group administrator can modify and adjust the program, uh, the output of uh, the program of the activities as, as they wish. And finally, the plan is shared. The fourth step and the last step is to share the plan via the app. So the activities appear in the group. So the second release of uh, the platform has uh, been used during the second pilot, which involved has involved so far more than a thousand, I think it's 1,300. Tino has the latest numbers. Uh, parents who took part uh, are still taking part in shared childcare activities. The app uh, has been used in a diversity of contexts, as you can see here in situations. So some examples uh, of how it has been adapted to different cost contexts. Uh, we can mention that um, uh, it had be, had been, has been used for managing self-organized summer camps, um, for instance, in Kortrijk, in Venice and in Bologna, um, for summer weekends, uh, within a company context. So this uh, was done mainly in Trento and in Kortrijk uh, for after school activities, uh, activities in the nature, which uh, occurred in Thessaloniki, um, summer camps with external educators, uh, so professionals, uh, which um, took place in uh, Gyor in Hungary and in Trento. And uh, also uh, in Venice, there was another interesting example. Parents used the app to take turns in order to pick the children from uh, home and take them to school and then back home again. Uh, all this walking. So this, is, this was called the walking pass. And also because of COVID and the new uh, situation, in, uh, it, it was also used, the app was used to uh, arrange online meetups and support for homework during the lockdown. And uh, this was done uh, particularly in uh, Bologna. So these are some metrics regarding the activities uh, and the platform as a result of uh, our project. Uh, I would just like to highlight and reiterate that it is currently being used by 20 communities. So we have 20 platform instances on, online right now, which shows, of course, that it is quite ex uh, extensible. It can, it can scale up quite easily. And also the six languages that we support. So French, for instance, was added uh, a month ago in order to uh, support some new instances. And uh, yeah, that's it. You can try the app if you want. You can download it from uh, Google Play Store. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Um, thank you, Manolis. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Chiara. Uh, I see Gianluca has also joined uh, from the co-design team at FDK. Um, so it's time now for, for um, some questions from, from the audience. Uh, you, we have uh, heard a lot from, from um, 
the family share project, uh, the CISCODE project, and uh, uh, the European Commission as well uh, on uh, co-design, co-creation as a uh, means to uh, achieve uh, sustainability uh, also during uh, crisis uh, times. And uh, Manolis has just pointed out at how um, actually a lot of unexpected uh, um, ways of um, taking up technologies are um, an outcome of uh, fully embracing uh, eco-design and, and co-creation uh, approach. So um, there are a lot of interesting uh, insights from, from what we heard. And uh, I just encourage you to use the um, Q and A, or to to raise your hand to pose some questions. While maybe you you take advantage of the of the Q and A uh, uh, box, um, I guess that um, our uh, attendees might be interested in to knowing better how. Uh, how this app can be further um, used, right, and um, and developed by by local communities. Um, we will uh, release uh, a dedicated toolkit, also uh, as as Agostino was mentioning, which will be online very soon. And uh, and there is a dedicated section to uh, app developers. Uh, where the repository with the code uh, will be made available. But the other way is to actually ask our partners to uh, support um, our uh, tech partners to, to support you in adapting the existing uh, version. Yes, of course, uh, I will. So. Uh, Francesca is asking if they can see the name of the app. Uh, I will share my screen again. That's okay. So it's called Families Share Development. You can look it up like this, or you can use the QR code if you want. Yep, um, you can, uh, if you are an Android user, you will uh, find it here. Otherwise, uh, yeah, um, for uh, Apple users, um, there's the link, right, Manolis? Yes, you, 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 uh, I'm afraid, although we have developed already uh, an iPhone app as well, um, we haven't managed to, to release it on the store, on the App Store, because there are huge delays partially related to COVID, uh, but you can use it uh, with a web link. I will, I don't know if someone uh, can have the web link. Yes, we will, uh, we will paste it uh, now. Uh, just give us one, uh, one second and, and we can do that. And uh, yeah, the slides will be made available. Um, I think also the recordings of, of this, uh, um, webinar will be shared on our Family Share um, YouTube uh, channel. Yeah. Uh, Maria, may I add uh, one thing? Because uh, I think that it's important to note that during the uh, or after the uh, activity, uh, the, the, the uh, activity that we made uh, in, this, uh, in the last month, also to. Uh, share the opportunities uh, uh, given by our app and our methodology to uh, local municipalities. Uh, some of them found uh, interesting to use the app also for unpredicted uh, uh, ways, uh, like uh, the, 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 in the case of Cavallino, a small town near Venice, uh, where uh, the small uh, municipality uh, adopted the app as a tool for uh, individually organizing, go to school and pick up shifts uh, to avoid crowds uh, and limit the COVID-19 spread uh, uh, 
in, uh, in, in, in that respect. So I think that uh, uh, now it's also time to uh, give uh, these, the results of the, of the project uh, uh, to local communities also to foresee uh, uh, other ways to uh, use it. Uh, and uh, in particular, I think that the new challenges that are uh, due to the, to the pandemic uh, uh, situation will uh, will force us also to uh, rely on uh, uh, an app that uh, basically supports circle of uh, circles of trust uh, in, in an appropriate way. Indeed, uh, yeah, there were many of these, several of these um, unexpected uh, ways of uh, of using it, and um, overall, I think. And I, I'm asking also uh, maybe Chiara and Gianluca if they, they share the, the view that uh, we have uh, experiencing over, overall as um, uh, using and adopting uh, co-design and co-creation uh, since the beginning to almost the end of the project uh, was actually um, increasing the quality of the of the final product a lot right which is something that not that not on not not often um, um, people working in ICT uh, are confident we or fully trust but uh, I think that from the from the project this was quite uh, evident if I can speak up Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So um, before the end of the project, I, I heard the discussion on, on the QR code, on the need to put it on the Apple Store. And I wanted to remind everybody what I mentioned earlier about trust and identity. So in, in view of the future development of this app, which looks to me uh, very good on usability. But I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see a major change in the way people are onboarded or digital wallets or who is the right holder and who is the issuer of credentials in order to certify uh, um, identity on, on, on your apps. So I would encourage you to look into that aspect. I mean, as you know, uh, with this phone from which I'm talking, it just recognized my face and I can use my fingers to enlarge and see the slides. And I find that really useful um, because on my Zoom, I had to re-identify myself four times, uh, put in four passwords. Um, and, and, you know, humans are not good at digitizing 20, uh, 20 numbers. So we've lost that habit with the phone. We don't digitize people's phone numbers. We don't have to remember them. I would encourage you to look into the new trust and identity frameworks um, so that you avoid the problem in, in the future. Any reactions on this from our speakers? Any comments? No, I think it's a very, very good point in the sense that uh, we are getting to the, uh, uh, the area of uh, uh, electronic identity and uh, is really something that uh, combines at the moment uh, with the advances on biometric recognition and uh, it, uh, it is uh, getting incorporated in, in, uh, in many, many uh, applications and in particular we think for uh, applications that support uh, uh, social innovation uh, that will become crucial because they uh, will uh, really uh, just, uh, uh, certify the identity of the, of, the, of, the, of the people that are not uh, just uh, uh, having access to the, to the device, but that use at that moment the device, which is very important. And also the, we, sh we should try to make it inclusive, like you said, so I don't know if an uh, QR code makes it inclusive or exclusive for people. So, or moving all electronic, if it makes it actually exclusive for the people that actually need the childcare. So, yes, I agree. It's 
it's very important to look at all these these aspects. Yes. Yeah, if I can add. Um, so we during the process, uh, well, I would try to combine a little bit of the comment from Maria about the long term of the development and the uh, interact the iterative design that we can uh, also uh, apply to the to the to the development of the app. Um, with the concern about security, so um, at the beginning it was one of the topics, as Chiara said, also one of the main pillars that we uh, consider in the design of the application. And then one point that mm, was very clear during uh, the first phases, but also in the second then uh, release of the app, was that uh, it's true that there are also important information that have been uh, shared in. In, within the app, information about your children, information about um, special needs and so on. Uh, but one of the, uh, so we try of, of course also to uh, provide that, uh, the technology to have users to safely store the, this information and use this information. But another aspect was that this app is mainly uh, just a support for existing groups. So it's not something that should be um, set so uh, just uh, downloading the app and using the app uh, as a, um, uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's not working. You have to combine the use of the app with an a group or a group of users and a group of parents or a group of friends or a group of colleagues. And that's the way also uh, we think um, uh, one of the main um, strong points of the app is that in that sense, it could adapt also to different uh, contexts and to different use uh, of, uh, of childcare or, or different uh, activities based on childcare. And on the other side, it, it will make this kind of uh, circle of trust also that is not just, uh, 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 say, locked in the app, but it's really shared between people and people who meet and 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 can they can use also other tools and not just uh, uh, the one that we provide to to support their activities sure and in the um, in the next uh, two sessions of our uh, of our final uh, webinar series of the project, uh, you will also have the opportunity to, uh, to know how we approached uh, the other topics that Francesca was, uh, was referring to, therefore, how we actually evaluate um, this um, uh, co-designing and co-production uh, processes. Uh, and how we um, try to distill from this participation from citizens also uh, uh, ideas about um, uh, agenda settings in terms of uh, policies. Uh, of course, in our case, this was related to childcare um, at the city level and at the um, organizational level. And um, on, all, on all these topics and the more, let's say, societal dimension, you will uh, learn more um, if you join us uh, tomorrow and on the 27th. So um, uh, we actually uh, already ran out of time. Um, if there are any uh, further final remarks from uh, our speakers, uh, I would... Uh, allow to uh, to say a few uh, things if you feel so. Okay, I, I will start quickly. So the, the key word is resilience over the next uh, two years. Um, I've mentioned the dashboards uh, where every, I, I look at the one for Italy, I look at the one for Greece. There's a whole list of what is digital, what is green, and when I look at uh, and health, and I think your project, if it were to contribute on work-life balance, I think you should try to include that in the dashboard. That's it, it's a suggestion. Thanks, Loretta. Yeah, we will uh, look into, into this carefully. 
So, um, uh, Manolis, would you give me back my screen for just uh, showing the, uh, the next two um, sessions? Oh. Can you uh, see it? Yeah, so uh, while uh, expressing our uh, warm thank you for having joined us today. Uh, we want to we want really to invite you to the to the next two sessions uh, tomorrow, uh, same hours as as today. Um, we will present you with the results of um, the piloting uh, of family shares into um, organizational welfare settings, both in Italy uh, from, by FPK. Um, and uh, in Belgium in particular, uh, taken care of by our uh, Belgian partners, uh, Destuvere. Um, while uh, the session number three, um, um, taking place on 27th October, therefore next week, um, we will uh, introduce you uh, to uh, what happened at the city levels and therefore uh, uptaking of the family share uh, solutions and up in neighborhoods uh, in uh, Venice, Bologna, uh, Gior, uh, Thessaloniki and Kurtrit. Uh, in both sessions we will also address uh, sustainability issues and uh, the emerging uh, policy recommendations both for organizational uh, welfare policies and uh, local childcare uh, policies at uh, city level. Uh, so, thanks again, and um, we uh, hope to meet you soon, uh, fr starting from tomorrow. Thank you uh, uh, to all our uh, speakers, Francesca, Loretta, and obviously uh, our great uh, consortium uh, partners. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.